Hey guys, and happy almost Halloween. A uh, different video, Departure from the Dead by Daylight series momentarily. Um, it's been a year now since I uploaded my first fake blood tutorial and I have gotten so many comments and questions and additional suggestions on that video since then and it's been awesome. Uh, the, the, the conversation in the comments has been like so great about everybody sharing what they've used, what worked for them, and how helpful the video was. So I thought, why not make a part two? So in the first video, I mostly went over uh, permanent fake blood options for props. Uh, the method that I used for that was not actually very applicable to fabric applications. So for this video, we're going to go more over the fabric stuff because I have gotten a lot of questions about that. Obviously, if you haven't seen the first video, you should definitely go watch that first. Very enlightening experience. Uh, I'm going to touch on stuff that I talked about in that video, but if you want the full in-depth, you should definitely go watch that one first and then come back here. And then we're going to talk about the fabric blood. Now, for those of you that are new here, I predominantly use two different blood mixes for my props. The first is a base of DecoArt Triple Thick Gloss mixed with red and dark blue acrylic. This is a mix I've used a lot and for many different applications. It gives an older blood look overall, but it's super versatile, very affordable, and most importantly, it's simple. It can be thinned with water for easier splattering or thickened with things like foam dust to create a more gunked up effect. The second blood mixture was most predominantly featured in my previous blood video. It also uses DecoArt Triple Thick Gloss as a base, but it's colored with resin tints. This mixture is much better for a fresh blood look. It's more transparent and it stays that way even when it's dry. Same as the other mixture, it's very versatile and can be splattered or made to look more chunky. So I use those two blood recipes pretty interchangeably. It just depends on the prop and the reference images and what kind of overall look I'm going for. But I received a ton of comments asking if those same recipes could be applied to fabric. And at the time I did test a few of them, but I didn't have a lot of success. The triple thick gloss is not flexible to the degree that fabric would need it to be. So it's really not a good base for that. So we're going to try some other alternatives. Naturally, I started with the last video's winner, which is red and black resin tints. I also acquired some blue and green this time just to test it. Now, since triple thick gloss isn't going to be an appropriate base this time, I decided to use textile medium as my base. Theoretically, you can mix this into any paint to make it better for fabric. That said, I'm not sure how these tints are going to take to fabric, so we'll just have to see. Next, I purchased some powdered fabric dyes to try. Obviously, these are made for fabric, but I wanted to see if I could only stain certain areas as opposed to dyeing the whole garment. I did not even read the instructions, but I'm pretty sure you're supposed to like mix these with hot to boiling water in order to get, you know, the dye to do its thing. But I like to live dangerously. <laughs> I mixed them with room temperature water instead. This first one is just the scarlet powder mixed with water. And then I mixed another one that has some added textile medium. Then I mixed another one with some brown powder added in. Pretty sure the color is cocoa. Now we move on to the method I know to be tried and true, which is acrylic paint. It can be easily thinned with water for splattering and it can be dry brushed, which I have had a lot of success with. But the best part about acrylic paint is that it can endure the wash. And I can attest to this completely because of how much paint I've gotten on my clothes unintentionally over the years. And let me tell you, it does not come out. Okay, so those are all of our mixtures that we're going to try. Now I have a pair of pattern tester pants that I made for my Huntress costume. And this is made from just super cheap muslin fabric. And this is gonna be our canvas for the blood trials. We're gonna start with a red resin tint mixed with textile medium. The consistency and color of this one's pretty good. It spatters nicely and also dry brushes pretty good. It does get a little pink when it's really thin though, but not a bad start. Next, we'll look at the one mixed with a little bit of black and green. I don't like the color of this one as much, but we'll have to see how it dries. Now, just for shits and giggles, I decided to put some straight red dye on here. I will later come to regret that decision. After
after that, I moved on to the fabric dies. Now, because I didn't mix these properly, they're kind of gritty. There's like little particles of stuff in it because I didn't, you know, boil it. But I'm not super worried about it. This one is much thinner, so it's not great for like a dirty, thick, fresh blood look. But I feel this would be good for like sweaty, washed out looking applications. I'm interested to see how this holds up after being rinsed out and washed. Because normally when you dye something with this type of fabric, it loses a lot of the color vibrancy after you rinse it and then wash it. So we'll see. This version with the textile medium looks better on camera, but in person it was a little on the pink side because the textile medium is white. But I'm thinking once it dries, it'll be more red. The mixture of the brown and red powder dye seems to be a better color for like an old blood stain. I'm excited to see how these hold up. Now on to the tried and true acrylic paint method. When you dry brush acrylic paint, it can make some super nice effects. You can do a mixture of colors to get a dirtier look, or you can go straight red and that looks pretty good too. You can also water it down and splatter it. Or pour it and let it soak in. And washing it will not remove this. The last test I'm going to throw in at the end here is uh, probably my least favorite. This is the very accessible commercial fake blood that you can get at most party stores this time of year. It's super inexpensive and it does look really good, but in my opinion, it should really only be used for one-time use applications. These type of products across the board are very sticky, they don't dry, and they stain everything. <laughs> These kind of things are best used for outdoor Halloween decorations, very short photo shoots, or applications where you need a ton of blood very cheap. Otherwise, I do not recommend this stuff. That being said, I did want to show it anyway for those of you wanting to know how it looks before you ruin something. So that's it for that. Now we just have to let everything dry. One eternity later. All right, so we're back. Everything is dry now. Uh, presumably. Even this, I'm shocked. It feels awful and it looks awful, but it is dry. So... So the resin tint, this feels a little rubbery almost, kind of sticky, but the areas where it's brushed out, it's totally dry and not, not super stiff. This feels a little crunchy. That's just a different color, but I guess the, the more you put on the stiffer this is going to be. It's also, it went through and it's stuck to the other side, so that's probably not helping, but. Um, the Rit dye by itself is obviously the softest because it's just dye. There's just nothing added to that. The paint ones are going to be thicker. The, uh, the water only for the dye is kind of gritty, like I thought, because <laughs> I didn't, like, boil it like I was supposed to. Um, but otherwise, passable. The acrylic paint, uh, where I poured it on, it stuck to the other side and obviously it's now kind of stiff. But still fine. Um, that, uh, did not dry. The, just the Illumilite dye is still very much not dry. And then this is dry, shockingly, but it looks super pink, so. So the next step is to throw the whole thing in the wash. I decided to hand wash this to save water and also to not ruin anything else that I may have washed with it. Better safe than sorry. Right away, you're gonna see a lot of pink. Most of that is from the red tint that I added that wasn't mixed with anything. It just, it, it just did not dry at all. The acrylic paint doesn't show any bleeding. The same with the RIT dye mixed with the textile medium. But the RIT dye that was just water obviously comes out with water. 
The other samples that use the resin tints also bled a lot of pink. This type of dye clearly is not the best for this application. Anyway, so I gave the whole thing a good wash with soap and cold water. Overall, they don't look too bad, but we're gonna see how it handles the dryer. So this is the final result. There's definitely a lot of pink on here, but I think we have some very viable options. Uh, I think resin tints are just, the undertone is just too pink for me. It just doesn't look realistic. I'm glad that it's showing up correctly on camera. A lot of the stuff I filmed, it looked more red on camera than it actually is, but I feel like this, what you're seeing now is more accurate to how it actually looks. The RIT dye though is actually not bad at all. Like this one that had the textile medium mixed into it is actually very rich in color. I would definitely use this in an application where I wanted it to look freshly splattered, but it's 100% it's dry. Uh, the RIT up here, this was the, the one mixed with brown. This one is a little more aged looking. The RIT dye that was just mixed with water came out too pink, so it definitely needed that medium to give it more body. Um, so yeah, th these were the two that were water, so obviously they're uh, a little less pigmented, but still, still viable in certain applications. Um, obviously the paint is my favorite. This is the one that I've used on most of my costumes that required blood or distressing of any kind. I especially love this where I poured it. If you were gonna pour it like this, you'd have to put something in the middle so it doesn't go all the way through. But to me, this sort of brown shade looks the most like dried blood to me, especially where around the edges, it's a little bit darker. And then obviously where you can brush it out, that would be more like smeary type business, but. And then obviously this is, <laughs> we call that a stain. <laughs> I guess if you need a pink stain for something, then I guess go for it. Have fun. <laughs> There's obviously plenty of other options out there. I did not test everything. Doing this part two video was very last minute, so I, I got a hold of what I could. Uh, one thing that I did not get to try that I also had wanted to try for the part one of this video is uh, Pale Nights Perma Blood. This stuff came super highly recommended. There were people that message me directly to let me know about this. It was it was something I had looked into for the first video, but I just, it it's hard to get. Cause like the first time they were out of stock, the second time they're like, oh, we have like a two week turnaround time on this particular product. And I was like, all right then. So if anybody has used that personally and wants to speak on that in the comments and let everybody know how it works, is it worth the money? It's a little bit more on the expensive side. Is it good for props or does it work for fabric applications? So if anybody has the answers to those questions, let me know. And if they don't, if you guys really want to know, I'll order it now and we'll do a part three just for that. But on that note, there is another product that I wanted to talk about. Kind of out of line with the fabric thing, but I wanted to mention it here because it's just a product that I absolutely love and it's blood. So I just had to tell you about it. So for anybody looking for a good skin or makeup, blood, I highly recommend Krylon's FX Blood. This stuff is fan stinking tastic <laughs> I have had serious issue trying to find a blood that I could put on my hands and not get it on everything that I touch. My Huntress cosplay has a lot of blood in a lot of places where I'm actively touching or walking or things like that. Like it's all over my face, my hands, my feet. And I just did not want something that was going to transfer or be sticky or disgusting. So this product came very highly recommended and I've used it many times now and it is by far my favorite. It goes on really realistic and it stays on very realistic. It dries like it still looks wet. It's just, it's so nice, but it does not stain and it comes off with just water. So bad if you're going out in the rain but good if you're worried about it not coming off and it's staining your skin because I have put this all over my face and I am good to go right after I wash my face like it's also in splattering related applications for that I've gotten it all over my entire bathroom and I have not ruined anything it just wipes right off like it's it's great. I can't recommend this product any more highly. <laughs> this is just a quick little snippet of me putting on my Huntress makeup, just so you can see how this stuff applies. 
um, I like to do a, like a dripping effect. So I put it where the blood would start and then let it drip naturally, like let gravity do the work for me. And this stuff, it just looks so realistic and it's, it's fantastic that it stays that way. And I wore this to work and I wore it for eight hours. So this is what it looks like after all that. Obviously anywhere I was sweating, it does reliquify. So I got like a blood streak down the side of my nose and stuff, but overall it still looks great. It, it almost looks more realistic having been worn, but, and then it washed right off. So love this stuff. So that about wraps it up guys. I uh, I know it's really last minute. I hope maybe this is still, you know, in time to help somebody with their last minute Halloween costume or decorations or whatever. Um, I need to stop having good ideas so last minute. Uh, but anyway, I hope, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Again, if you have comments, questions, suggestions, if you have personal experience with products we didn't show here, products you think I should test, maybe we keep this ball rolling maybe there's more blood options to be explored let me know in the comments we'll keep this this forum open and uh yeah happy halloween everybody i hope uh you all have a great holiday and hopefully a long weekend out of it whatever uh but yeah uh until then stay tuned for awesome